Today I want to talk about sword use from horseback and why the sword is not as important as where your horse is. This is a late 15th century hand and a half sword. Uh, whether it was called a hand and a half sword at the time, I'm not sure. It's quite long, but it's also quite narrow. It's almost a transitional type of sword. Obviously still designed for slashing, uh, and it's also designed for stabbing as well. It doesn't have any fullers down the middle, but it actually has a raised middle bit, so it's diamond in cross section. It's, um, it's fairly heavy, but it's quite well weighted, and uh, this is the sword I use when I'm practice cutting from the back of Warlord. But I wanted to show you a few things about swords, first of all, because a sword is basically a fantastically well-shaped piece of metal. It's weighted at one end, pointed, sharpened, and all that kind of stuff, but it's still a piece of metal and it has its own vibrations as well. So when you do this to a sword, you will see that any kind of impact will vibrate the sword in different ways and there will be what's called a percussion point somewhere in the handle and there'll be a percussion point somewhere on the blade. This percussion point here on this particular sword, it will vary depending on the sword, depending on the weight of the pommel, depending on the construction of the sword. But basically every sword has this sweet spot. This is the spot where if you're cutting something with, you want to cut with, because any kind of disturbance of the blade, any slight imperfection with edge alignment, is less affected by this point here. You can test it yourself, just tap it and see where it vibrates. And the vibration point in the hand as well will mean that holding it there is the sweetest place to hold the sword. Holding it in a different place can cause vibrations to come back up your arm. So there is a bit of a science, physics and all of that to how to use a sword and whether it feels good when you're actually striking a target or when you're swinging it. So I think that's kind of interesting for people. Every single sword has that characteristic as far as I'm aware. If you were to cut a target, say, with the sword at the tip there, it would probably do damage, but it wouldn't do as much damage or feel as good as if you cut on the percussion point, roughly there. If you are on a horse though, going past your subject, the distance of the horse from the target is absolutely crucial. I'm gonna show that to you when I'm mounted. Right, Warlord's been very good as usual. He is molting, his hair is coming out at the moment because he's changing from his winter coat into his summer coat. All of these hairs mean there's a change coming. So spring is in the air and we are going to do some work with a sword. This is a sharp sword. So because I'm going to show you distance to target on Warlord, I'm not going to use this one because it's just a, a lot more dangerous than a plastic or a wooden practice sword. And a wooden practice sword is completely legitimate of the period. So this one goes away for another time and I will go and get a wooden sword and get on Warlord. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here I am on Warlord, 15th century reproduction saddle and a wooden sword. I think it's very likely that people would have practiced in medieval times with wooden swords. They're cheap after all compared to a real one and uh, they don't do nearly as much damage if you clonk somebody by accident. So I think wooden swords would have been an important thing back then even for experienced knights, because you don't need to use a sharp when you're training on horseback all the time. It is useful, of course, because a sharp sword has a different weight and it feels different in the hand, but a wooden sword like this is perfectly good for these purposes. Here's my target. It's just a post with a bit of padding on the top that represents the head of an enemy on foot. Obviously, on horseback, your target might be another rider, it might be somebody on the ground further down, but this is quite a useful approximation of, uh, well, it's just a useful working target, basically, for sword practice. You will see the obvious, which is the target, when you ride a horse, the target can be on this side, or it can be on this side. And I'll talk about the near side, which is the side you get on the horse, 
uh, later. But this is the side ideally you want your target on and this is the side you need to ride your horse uh, past the target to get the best position. Come on then. Enough talking, let's do some doing. Now, obviously I can't hit the target. I could just about hit the target from here, but I'm going to be leaning forward and I'm going to be hitting with the tip of the sword. It's useful, but it's not ideal. Now I'll go a little bit too far away from the target and show you how that's going to go. Come on, this one's always hard to do. You want to be cutting when you are at your strongest on horseback, so it would be probably about here. So just about where your horse's shoulder is. Now, the problem with that is you've got to make sure the target is in the right place, or rather, you've got to make sure your horse is in the right place relative to the target. And you've got to get your timing right. So you're going that way, the target is coming past you, assuming it's a compliance target. I'm obviously aware that people will be dodging and uh, targets don't want to be hit usually, but for the simplicity and purposes of this demonstration, let's assume the target's stationary. You want to be hitting about here because you'll be riding past it as you go and then you bring the sword away and move away from any kind of reprisal. Now let me just show you what will happen if you are not in the right place. So if you are too close to the target, you're crowded right up to the target, it's really hard, your elbow is bent, you're scrunched up, you're really close to the person if they're a person, if that's a target, and you don't, you sort of get a crunched up strike and it won't be as effective. Obviously any strike is better than none, but it's not the optimum target. You want the target to be, or rather you want to be further away from the target to hit on the right part of the sword. This doesn't have a percussion point that I can tell, it's just a stick, but um, Roughly the same kind of place here um, is where I'm aiming to try to get the target as I go past it in the right place. So you want to hit the target when it's coming past you at the right place and also the right distance away from you. The other side is obviously being too far away from the target, which means you can't hit it. That's completely obvious of course, but there is a tendency for people on horseback Say I'm here, I can just, I can't quite reach, but I can, I can lean out, lean out, lean out. Now if I lean out, I destabilize everything and I can fall off that way or easily catch something and fall off. You really want to remain upright in the saddle if you can. So your maximum reach is, well, is that sort of distance. It's about three feet away from you, maybe a little two and a half to four feet away. You can go a little bit that way, but basically you want the target to be the right distance away from you. Now this is the simple side. This, if you like, is the offhand forward cut. Let me show you further complications if the target happens to be on this side for you and that what that actually means because you may not be able to ride the optimum side of a target on the battlefield you may have to strike a target this side and let me show you that on this side of the target you have Broadly the same set of issues, which is you don't want the target to be too far ahead of you or too far behind you. You want it to be roughly level with the horse's shoulders as you strike. You don't want it to be too far away that side and you don't want it to be too close to, the, to your horse or to you as possible. But I'm right-handed and all the power is going to come from my right shoulder and on the right hand or off side of the horse my arm goes out this far. Unless I'm left-handed, which is a fairly rare thing in the medieval period, I've got to do everything slightly closer on this side because I've got to bring my sword over from the right-hand side, from the off side, 
to the left hand side or near side. So the distances on this side of the horse necessarily come closer when you're using a sword. So on this side you get used to it in one way but on this side you've also got to ride slightly closer. My reach on this side I can't really get my shoulder much more than exactly in line with the horse and that's quite awkward. So my reach on the near side of the horse or the left hand side of the horse as I'm seeing it is much less than the reach over on this side and also the mechanical power of a chop or a stroke on this side is less because I've got to come across and twist. I actually have to twist my whole torso. If I'm chopping forwards and downwards that's relatively straightforward but if I am chopping this way which is another completely legitimate strike I'm all sorts of tied up with this kind of movement. This side is easier because I've got this kind of movement and there's downwards and then there's this as intermediate strikes but this one going horizontally is quite necessarily sort of scrunched up. You get used to it though and you naturally when you're riding a horse and when you're very used to riding a horse you get these distances right most of the time but when people are starting out on horseback they tend to ride to the target and they tend to ride over the top of the target they tend to get the target really really close the best way to imagine hitting a target is rather than fixate on the target is to imagine a line going past the target and ride that line so the target is in the right place so you ride the line with the horse, get the horse focusing on just going in a direction and then the target should naturally fall into the right place to hit the right distance, the right speed and remember the right point on the sword. So if you're travelling at 25 miles an hour in this direction you've got a few inches of that sword and a few inches of that target to try to bring together kinetically so that you get the best kind of cut or strike. There's an awful lot more to it. Obviously people could be left-handed potentially, although for much of the medieval period you would have had a shield in this hand and a sword in this hand. But it's not impossible, especially in duels, that you could hear and see people fighting left-handed. Potentially you could have two weapons, one in each hand. That's difficult on foot. Uh, it's very difficult on horseback as well and you might stand more chance of injuring the horse or hurting yourself. There are lots more bits to talk about with sword use from horseback. In summary then, the key component of being a mounted cavalryman, the most important thing of being a knight on horseback, is your riding skill. You cannot use your sword effectively, or any weapons effectively, if you can't ride well. So the absolute fundamental basis of any kind of cavalry troops has to be their ability to ride their war partners, the horse. If you can't get your horse in the right position, it doesn't matter how brilliant a swordsman you are, you're not going to hit anything. It's as simple as that. The horse represents your legs. And as anybody who does any kind of fighting martial art will tell you, footwork is the basis of a good martial art. It's exactly the same with cavalry tactics on horseback. Your feet though are four-legged and furry and without your horse in the right place your sword can't strike, your lance will miss. So fundamentally the horse is more important than the weapon. Good boy, come on then. <laughs>